Hi. You all hear me? All good? Yeah. yeah. You know there is a talk upstairs about black holes, right? You know? I wish I could go, but I'm a bit busy. Um, before we start, a quick word from Greg. This is Greg. He's my cat. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Always insightful. <laughs> so... Who am I? The existential question I ask myself every day. Let's see. My name is Will Anderson, and I'm a filmmaker and animator from the Highlands of Scotland, and I currently live in Edinburgh, where I make lots of dialogue-driven, character-led uh, based work. It ranges from quite personal and emotional stuff, because I'm a big emo, uh, with a bit of comedy thrown in. Uh, comedy, depending if you think I'm funny or not, you know, can be at times. I make a heap of shorts. I've done too many, some would say. Uh, I've made lots of stuff for online. I do interactive work. Very recently made a feature documentary, uh, which was really difficult, with an animated character in the middle of it. Uh, lots of stuff. It's kind of broad. Uh, work for BBC, BFI stuff, uh, Adult Swim, MTV, like lots of cool things. So, but that was the past, and I didn't want to talk about that really, because the more exciting thing that I've been into recently is Blender. We're at Beacon, right? So we've got to talk about Blender. Um, I love it. It's fire. It's the best thing in the world. Sorry, Suzanne, I set you alight. Uh, I just love it. Um, and it's just changed the way I think about work, really. So this is me and Ainsley looking really pretentious. Ainsley Henderson, we are collaborators. He's a stop motion animator, um, which I always think it's really good that when you're working with people, like you work with people who don't do what you do and you kind of learn things and you learn different processes. So we're bros and we work together a lot. Uh, these are the short films that I was kind of banging on about earlier. Uh, all the way a hundred years ago when I made a film called The Making of Longbird. That was my graduation film that won a British Academy Award. And I'm still shocked that that happened. <laughs> wasn't expecting... <laughs> wasn't, uh, wasn't fishing for compliments there, but you know, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> These are all available online. Uh, these span, yeah, not actually 100 years, maybe 12. Most recent one, Shaco, which I produced. I kind of do a little bit of producing as well. Uh, but if you're curious, they're online. This is the best thing ever. This was like such an influence on me when I was a kid. Homer Cubed, which was a Treehouse of Horror Halloween you know, episode of The Simpsons. And I just totally love it, and it blew my mind. And like, I'll probably butcher it, but the story is, it's a short within an episode. Patty and Selma come over and Homer panics and hides behind a book closet and he uh, stumbles across a portal to another dimension. And he thinks, oh, I'd rather risk certain death possibly getting trapped in there than spend time with my sisters-in-law. <laughs> so funny, so brilliant. And like, even as a kid, I think I was just like kind of, so I just thought it was so funny that the characters were aware of themselves and a dimension above themselves. And it was just so playful and funny. And apparently in the world, there's like 10 dimensions and we only know about, you know, three of them. So, you know, something's up, something, something strange is going on. <laughs> More recently, I love this guy, uh, Puss in Boots. He's the best, like so flawed. Look at his little tongue sticking out. So flawed, so kind of, yeah, like, loves himself, self-obsessed. Because I think characters, I think the best characters in the world are uh, ones that have their flaws shown. It just, it's just so human. I just love it. I sort of nicked that. And uh, uh, I just think I want to make Puss in Boots with, this, with my Greg cat. You know, I love it. This is me with a cat. If you can tell, uh, like, I'm a cat person, right? <laughs> uh, with my tongue sticking out. That's my other cat, Dom, uh, which was the feature documentary I was telling you about. Uh, I, would, I could talk about that for a while, but I don't have time, actually. So before uh, I got into Blender, I was really into Moho. I, it's great. Uh, like 2D puppet software, really underused, in my opinion. 
but I kind of caught wind around COVID time that it was maybe going to go out of business and I panicked because it was like a limb. It's like, this is how I make all my work. How am I going to survive without it? Uh, so I had two choices. I was like, I can either go to the gym and like work on myself or I could learn Blender. So yeah, learn Blender. Uh, I feel like the, I feel like the default cube gets a lot of stick, but I think it's cute. Uh, but to make yourself feel better, uh, on my computer there's a gym folder, so everything goes in there. And, and like, actually everything I've ever done in Blender is in the gym folder. But like, in like, to be serious about it, it's actually just about making a habit. So it's like when you go to, when you go to the gym, you're gonna get you're gonna get buff, you're gonna you're gonna get good at it. If you open Blender every day, you're gonna get super, you know, ripped on Blender. So started doing that, and I've just loved it. And I started with uh, grease pencil. And basically, my goal was to kind of work out how to do all the things that I was doing in Moho, but now in Blender. And it kind of, that focus really helped me. And it, suddenly, I had this other dimension to play with. And you could kind of be more playful with it, which I just loved. So I really jumped into rigging, which maybe isn't like the sexiest thing to start with. But if I were to recommend that, I would say rigging's definitely a great place to start. I love like just making little robots and dragging things around because bear in mind like I've you know spent 12 years animating and I'm kind of bored of it so I want to find new ways to animate kind of quickly in different ways so pretty early in my kind of blender journey I was playing around with how do you uh, animate like sort of more like puppetry so um, I kind of was looking at like controlling it with iPads and a very early face OSC thing, an open sound control signal. There's this other app called FaceCap, which is just totally excellent, and I'm using it a lot at the moment, and it uses the AR kit 52 blend shapes and just mapping it to a really kind of, I don't know, rudimentary little model, just to get things moving, really. So the first thing we did with that was uh, a little short for Adult Swim called Christmas is Cancelled. It's on YouTube, you can see it on there. Yeah on their YouTube. It's about Santa, it's COVID and he quits. He's just had enough. He thinks it's time for a holiday. This elf is not happy about it. So this was all made like with like puppetry and I animated in like two days and no one knows. So it's like, right, this can work. That's kind of the setup that I was using like uh, an iPhone to control it. Kind of fun, just really like that stuff. So the next thing I did was look at some of the old films I was making. So I had this film called Betty, and then there's this little character, this little, he's a bird, uh, called Bobby, and I started bringing it into Blender. And I actually found it like really quite straightforward, because I think I'm coming from a geometric, simple shapes. I wasn't overcomplicating things, and trying to think about things in 2D and how they move in 2D and bringing them into 3D. And it's just so fun. And so like me being thrown into 3D, like my characters are now there. So just like playing around with that. It's a bit like Homer cubed that. I think I'm just ripping it off. <laughs> Here's like the sort of stop frame influence that's coming in from working with Ainsley. I, I kind of like that you could add like your own mark to it. So it's like, these are my fingerprints in a little bump map, which isn't probably interesting for people that know all about this. But for me, yeah, that was like, wow, you can like, make it really tactile and it's just so so fun and it's part it's like so personal as well kind of started playing with geometry nodes this probably isn't really that complicated compared to some of the things that you guys can do but um yeah i've really jumped in there and love it i feel like coming in from a, like a 2d point of view is like i have no idea how to model i think it's the hardest thing ever so using geometry nodes to quickly draw and rig up things was just so exciting for me. That's me in my little green suit being very silly. Um, just a procedural way of working. It's like, wow, this is so exciting. Everything I'm doing as well as an EV, it's just a barely touched cycles. So, so I kind of adapted that setup to make a little character generator. Hello. I was made in geometry nodes. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. In other news, uh... So are you. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so are you. Might have been. We might have been. You know, there's ten dimensions. <laughs> I just totally love playing around with it. It's so fun. And, you know, I think, I think about this a bit, where, you know, when you're a kid 
and you're, uh, you just want to play all the time and you're allowed to. And then we become adults and then we're not supposed to anymore. We're supposed to be really serious. I just don't like that. I just think it's the most important thing to do where possible is to play as much as, is, is to play as much as possible. So that's what I really kind of try to do and try to get that energy in it. It looks like we're living in a simulation in this thing here. To, uh, to learn these guys, maybe some of you are here. Just, wow, you guys know everything about geometry nodes. This was the most useful resources. You know, these people are geniuses. Uh, started to do things as well, like live. I was doing it. I had a little phase of trying to, like, I don't know, go on Instagram live and move things around and not be precious because, again, it's just about being spontaneous and improvising and turning cats into Death Stars. That's what I was kind of thinking about. <laughs> Uh, just fun to just mess, you know. This was my first go at hair. Uh, awful. I'm not pretending, by the way, just so you guys know that I'm good at any of this. I'm just enthusiastic. <laughs> uh, terrifying, right? But, you know, this is Bobby. Bobby is my favorite cat on Instagram. Uh, how beautiful is Bobby? I want Bobby. I want Bobby to live with me. I want to own Bobby. Uh, but I realize that I probably will never even meet Bobby, so I could make Bobby. <laughs> so bringing in that reference mainly from Instagram. Uh, a little terrible 2D drawing. Someone sent me this cat as well, Atum. Amazing, right? So this cat has hypertrichosis, which is a condition which causes excessive hair growth. And it kind of makes me, like, uh, you know, it kind of looks a bit like this guy, I think. <laughs> but that was a coincidence. Uh, love Atchum as well. Here's another video of Atchum. Just so, such a cool cat. That's him trying to escape his house and come and live with me, probably. <laughs> love him. So this is my first go. It's a bit like Bobby. It's a bit like Atchum. It's terrifying. I don't know really. It's making me feel a bit sick, but you know, I'll keep going. That's how we do it. Uh, I like to like rig with lattices and make washy, stretchy things. Just get things moving again, not being too precious about the geometry or anything. This is the kind of first try. Playing around here. It's so horrible. Inflation. Inflation is a bad thing, right? Went through a little phase of inflating characters. It's so silly. I'm sorry, I can't believe I'm at Beacon showing this. It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, he's going for a little run there, a little plod. <laughs> so, so horrible. Around this time, I kind of asked uh, on Twitter, like, what should we call him? And Greg won. Greg, he's very wholesome, isn't it? It was very nearly ma hat mancock. <laughs> that wouldn't have went well. I quite like Mr. Sniffles, but anyway. So, yeah, we've got a name now. Great. More inflation. I will stop this soon, don't worry. <laughs> it's so horrible. Uh, I realise at this point that my topology is terrible, like really bad. Uh, again, just so ugly, but I'm not thinking like that. I'm just thinking about more like you would draw it in 2D, I guess. So starting to kind of refine it a little bit. Again, uh, bringing those rigging oh, things meow. into it. Um, meow. <laughs> just to get it moving and focusing on the head, really, not really thinking about the body. And then I kind of realized that, yeah, he needed some real eyes and stuff. And it's starting to get, ooh, crazy. I start, as I said, I don't really like animating anymore. So like the great thing about geometry noise is you can just throw in noise textures and get things moving. I just love that. But I realized still, if I want to do live things, I have to sort out the topology. So this took me a week. You guys that do retopology and are, you're geniuses. I, I, it was so challenging for me because I was just so used to being so messy, if you know what I mean. This book helped, uh, an e-book called The Art of Floating Points by Brian Tyndall. I go back to it all the time. I haven't read it all, to be honest, but when I get stuck, I'll, I'll look, up, look up the index and it's great, really recommend that. Um, more tests with face tracking, with face cap now. So I've got this kind of Craig working in. Greg working with uh, live stuff, which is kind of cool. Also, like, this is maybe from a couple of years ago, so, you know, I've been doing things since then, but I was, this was very early simulation node stuff, and I was like, oh, wow, you can get, like, an automatic eye dilation thing going. I probably did it wrong, but I just, you know, you can see my motivation. I'm just trying not to animate anything, basically. 
This takes me back a little bit to, because I wanted to kind of mess with it and make it feel a bit more stop frame. So that, uh, a film that me and Ainsley made years ago, uh, I'm more the digital side and compositing side, and he was animating this stop motion puppet. And we often describe it like, you know, when you draw a line and it boils if it's not a perfect line. In stop motion, it's a bit, it was a bit the same. He would just ruffle it up and it kind of gives it a little bit of life. So I was trying to think about with the current limit, I think this was before simulation nodes actually, so it's like, how do I get that kind of look and feel? So I sort of made this thing called Warpy Step, which was a way of just stepping with the scene time node. And I was like, it just felt very obvious to me. Uh, and again, it's just a tool that just speeds up my workflow, it's super fun. And basically all it is is just whacking a noise through it and then pulling the, um, you know, the frequency up or whatever, amplitude down and uh, you just get this slight shift and then it feels like, you know, the hairs are moving. You know, probably not the smartest way of doing it, but I sort of don't mind really. It's just all about creative problem solving, I guess. Uh, kind of gives a feeling that I was looking for. Next step was like, how do I get hands and things moving? You know, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just not one to animate anything. This was Blend AR mocap, and it kind of worked. It's a bit buggy, but some guy made it, and it was very cool to kind of play around with. Uh, maybe he's here, I don't know. Um, shout out if you are. So Greg uh, is kind of like coming alive now. I love it. He's sort of realizing, becoming self-aware, seeing his own geo, maybe. Uh, started to like uh, play around with like, I didn't know how to do collisions or I didn't know how that would work in geometry nodes, so kind of fake them with rigging setups and little bulging setups and geometry nodes. Because at the end of the day, it's all 2D, right? So it doesn't, does it matter? Am I going to get in trouble? I don't think so. <laughs> this was like a full body takeover with Blend AR mocap as well. Really great add-on, try it out. Uh, yeah, so fun just to play with. So I kind of started to think about what's Greg going through. Is he going to reach enlightenment? I think he might. That's him there. This was another like test with. Uh, oh, wait, where are we? This is another test with. Have we got this? Yeah, with uh, some hair. After simulation node started to, you know, you could sort of set those parameters. But yeah, it's kind of cool. I would show you the thing that I did for another festival, Pixelplasma 2023, uh, but I don't think I've got that much time. Uh, but it's online, and yeah, you can, you can check it on uh, YouTube. It was at Annecy recently, and it won the commissioned film. I can't believe it. But this is the star of it. Greg coming alive. But yeah, I won't spoil it. It's only a minute and a half anyway. So This is a picture I drew of Greg. Big fan of Greg. This is a picture other people have drawn of Greg and sent to me. If you want to do it, please do. I'm doing a talk in a couple of weeks. I'll put it in the next presentation. The next uh, step for me was, how do I actually get him into my flat? Another excellent thing about Blender is that you don't need to leave Blender, so I can do all the tracking in, in Blender and then sort of start to composite a little bit and think about how he could maybe come into the real world. This was, again, a, a little while ago, uh, maybe a year and a half, and I really was kind of sitting thinking about, like, what is this film about? And I kind of just worked it out very recently, and it's just finished really so I'm hoping to like hit festivals maybe early next year and I realized kind of almost in a eureka moment in my mind where it's a film about Greg and the camera should be on him for 10 minutes and it's about him going through an existential crisis and finding inner finding his inner you know spiritual you know self and it's called existential Greg so Hopefully, you guys can get to see that soon. Uh, where is the tiles up here? There we are, existential Greg. R probably the most like experimental thing I've done. It was mainly n narrative films before that, but uh, yeah, really excited about you know sharing that with the world, I guess. In the meantime, I've been making some other tools with geometry nodes. I feel like with noodles, the thing that I made was like just capping off a you know so you can draw. I feel like I wanted the other profile, so like almost puffing out an end gone. So I started playing around with that. It's, again, I'm probably doing it wrong, but am I going to get in trouble? Uh, if you know a better way, please tell me. Uh, I did call it something else, but we're not going to draw attention to that because that guy is a douche. Uh, so I changed the name of it recently to Mother Puffer. So that's available. This is uh, some examples of it. Um, Brockorama, he's on Instagram. He's brilliant. He used it for his new short film. 
kind of this sort of stop frame looking feel that I like in it. And that, you know, the, the making like animating slightly differently in, in Blender is just really appealing, maybe from that stop frame influence. Uh, this gives me an opportunity to introduce the magnificent Yonk, who are doing a similar thing. They are a Hague-based studio, very near here. Uh, VR sculptors, and they do magnificent uh, 3D art and commercials and all that stuff. They've got a solution for swapping and onion skinning, uh, which is really interesting. We started working together a lot, and I started thinking about how to do uh, some onion skinning, maybe with geometry nodes. And I kind of managed to work it out, really. It's not as intuitive as theirs, but again, it's just, it's all about play really for me. So like kind of found a way to assign a material and uh, you know, fade it out. So we've got like frames in front and behind and it kind of, it kind of works, kind of, kind of exciting. It's maybe not the most intuitive though. Yonks is better for that. Uh, and that, yeah, this brings me to just kind of announce that me and Yonk are gonna make a short film together and it's gonna be super fun. It's us all laughing, being friends. Uh, we're, uh, yeah, we're making a film called Learning, and they're learning to drive, uh, both of them, and they were telling me all these funny stories about it. I was like, that's a great idea for a short film, like learning to drive. And maybe we can make it all in Blender and collaborate, because that's what Blender's all about, right? Collaborating. So it feels like a really, you know, you know it feels like a perfect short film to be made in Blender. So that's a little preview. So we're going to be doing that. We're kind of starting to work on that. Super exciting. Ooh. Um, little car. <laughs> That always makes me love that, love that. And in the meantime, I've just been experimenting with uh, live facial motion capture stuff with that face cap, and I just totally love it, and I'm in a really happy place with it right now, actually. It's like, I'm trying to work out how to do like very 2D influenced things and keep using geometry nodes uh, to keep it procedural as procedural as possible. I think that's just, the future and how exciting would that be to be able to change everything so quickly and just get things working. Uh, up until now, I've not really done any add-ons apart from my first one, which is Facial Moscap OSC, Open Sound Control. And it's just a receiver so that you can use FaceCap and maybe some free um, facial motion capture apps on your phone and get it into Blender. I'm definitely not the first person to do this. There's some that are available that are amazing. Uh, I'm just trying to refine one that works for me. And uh, yeah, it's kind of working. I can't believe it. And uh, maybe I'll release it in a month or so, I think. But yeah, it's fun. There's a little wizard guy I've been playing with. Anyway, in a happy place with that. Uh, I kind of strongly believe that the whole secret to this, for me anyway, about learning and just enjoying yourself and being generally a happier person is just to play and you know, play as much as possible, make, you know, make your own rules and then break them. It's just like, you're not gonna get into trouble. I've not got into trouble yet. And the very, very last thing I wanna say is that of course it doesn't matter what software you use, as long as it's Blender. <laughs> That's me, thank you.